The most important resistance force to model when making a car game is air resistance, often called drag. Because drag is proportional to the square of our velocity. Therefore, as we propel our car at greater and greater speeds around the track, that drag force is going to grow disproportionately. Eventually, it will grow so large that it will completely cancel out the traction force altogether. At that point, our car will have reached its maximum speed and will be in a state of equilibrium. Now, if you've never seen what air resistance looks like, it looks a little bit like this. <laughs> As you can imagine, on such a large body as a vehicle, that drag force can grow very strong when traveling at high speeds. But if the traction force ever outweighs the sum of the resistance forces, then your car will undergo a positive acceleration of some degree. Equation 1 shows a formula for calculating our drag force vector, Fd, where C drag is a constant and V is our car's velocity vector. Note that the single bars either side of the second V term denote that this refers to the magnitude of our velocity vector, otherwise known as speed. Also note that we negate the result as we want the resulting force to be acting in the opposite direction to our velocity. Now, depending on how realistic you want to get, you can just plug in any numbers you like for that C drag constant in equation 1. You can use whatever feels right for your game, but of course that may require a fair bit of play testing. However, if you really want to get technical about this, or if you are creating a more realistic driving simulation, you can calculate the drag force magnitude in a more technically accurate way as we do in GI Racing inside our car script. Now, the most popular formula for approximating the magnitude of aerodynamic drag is shown in equation 2. And you may have come across this in many physics books and papers. It might look a little scary to the uninitiated, but it's actually pretty simple once we understand what all of those symbols represent. The CD term in equation 2 is referred to as the coefficient of drag and is different for every single car. It depends on the shape of the car body and is determined at design time via tests in wind tunnels. Fortunately, it's usually pretty easy to find the coefficient of drag for any popular cars. They are published all over the internet and in the car manufacturer's handbooks. My car, for example, is a Ford Mondeo. And after a quick search on Google, I was able to ascertain that for this model of car, the drag coefficient is 0 0.31. Next to CD in the equation, we can see the Greek symbol rho, which looks a little bit like that italic P. This is the symbol used to represent the density of air in physics equations. Now, air density changes based on the current temperature, and you can look up on Wikipedia a table of air density values for a given temperature. For example, if we assume the temperature to be 5 degrees C, we would use a value, based on this table, of 1.2690 kilograms meters cubed. Next in the equation, we have v, which is the magnitude of our velocity vector, in other words, our current speed. And you can see here that we have that squared velocity term that we've already discussed. Finally, a is the frontal area of the car, which once again is different for every single car, and is usually something stated in the manual in the specification section, or available on the manufacturer's website. For my Ford Mondeo, for example, it states the frontal area as being 22 square feet, or in SI units, 2.0439 meters squared. So while equation 2 might have initially looked a little scary at first glance, all those Greek symbols are just placeholders for real-world values that we can plug in. The result of equation 2 is the magnitude of our drag force in newtons. Now, we want our drag force as a vector quantity, and therefore equation 3 shows the final equation to generate our drag force vector, Fd. Now, under normal circumstances, properties such as the drag coefficient of the car, the air density, and the frontal area of the car will not change while the simulation is running, so there is no need to compute them each time. Only the velocity is changing. If we strip the velocity terms from equation 2, we are left with the correct equation to compute just C drag for use in equation 1, as shown in equation 4. 
C drag can then be calculated at simulation startup and will not have to be recomputed with each update. To give you an example, a quick search on the net informed me that my Ford Mondeo has a drag coefficient of 0.31, a frontal area of 2.0439 meters, and I will assume a temperature of 5 degrees C, which a quick search online informed me equated to an error density of approximately 1.2690. We could then compute C drag and the final drag force vector as shown on the slide in listing 1. As you can see, C drag is equal to 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.31 multiplied by 1.2690 multiplied by 2.0439, resulting in a C drag constant of 0 0.40202. We then compute our final drag force vector F drag by simply multiplying C drag by our velocity vector by our velocity's magnitude, remember that's the square speed term there, and negating the result so that it's acting in the opposing direction to the direction in which our car is traveling.